You're listening to Medscape's In Discussion series on lung cancer, a podcast where thought leaders and clinical experts share their diverse insights and practical ideas for optimizing patient care. This series is hosted by Dr. Jacob Sands, Assistant Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and Physician at the Thoracic Oncology Program at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston, Massachusetts. Relevant disclosures can be found with the episode show notes on Medscape.com or the Medscape app. The topics and discussions are planned, produced, and reviewed independently of advertisers. This podcast is intended only for you as healthcare professionals. Hello, I'm Dr. Jacob Sands, thoracic medical oncologist at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, assistant professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School, and co-founder and president of the Rescue Lung Society, a medical organization dedicated to rescuing lives from lung cancer through early detection. Welcome to Medscape's In Discussion series on lung cancer. Today, I have a fantastic guest to talk with us about lung cancer screening. Dr. Jeff Yang is a thoracic surgeon at Massachusetts General Hospital, assistant professor of surgery at Harvard Medical School, and founder of the American Lung Cancer Screening Initiative. Dr. Yang, welcome to In Discussion. Thank you so much for having me. Really excited to be here. Now, I'd like to start out first with a bit about your personal journey. What led you into medicine and maybe surgery? So my grandfather had lung cancer when I was in high school, and I spent time taking care of him. He was somebody I was very close to, someone I admired a lot. And part of his care team, I got to see what cancer care was like for him. And I got to see how doctors and nurses and other healthcare providers took care of him. And it really affected me deeply, that experience. And I've wanted to be a doctor and take care of patients like him ever since. Well, that obviously makes sense then in going into not just lung cancer, but all the work you're doing in lung cancer screening. Uh, it sounds like this is a very personal aspect of your work as well. Definitely. I think it's worth noting that he did smoke about a pack a day for 50 years, and he was diagnosed with small cell lung cancer in 2003. And I think that if the lung cancer screening guidelines had been in place at that time, they, they weren't, but if they were in place, that we could have caught the cancer earlier, m much earlier. It's still one of the big regrets for my life. I wanted him to see me graduate from medical school, and we weren't able to make that happen. But be because of that, it's really influenced me to go into medical school, become a thoracic surgeon, take care of patients like him. But also, I've had other very deeply personal experiences with lung cancer. My cousin, uh, who is only 40 years old, unfortunately passed away from lung cancer as well. So because of these personal experiences, I've continued to stay really focused on trying to help people with lung cancer. Well, you certainly are doing a ton for the field, and we'll dive into some of that. First, let's just talk about lung screening in general. We've had some major studies that have really shaped the field that have led to just the fact that we do lung screening, that this is USPSTF recommendation, uh, came from some studies. Let's start out first in discussing the NLST, and then we'll jump into a little bit of Nelson as well. Great. So the NLST stands for the National Lung Screening Trial. This was in 2011. The results were published in the New England Journal. And this is a large U.S. randomized clinical trial, which showed that annual lung cancer screening with low-dose CT reduced the risk of dying from lung cancer by 20% when compared to screening by chest x-ray. And this was truly a landmark trial because at the time that it was reported, lung cancer screening using low-dose CT had not yet been recommended. And importantly, the results of this trial clearly demonstrated the survival benefit associated with lung cancer screening using low-dose CT. Just briefly talking about the study design, there are 53,452 participants, and the participants were between the ages of 55 to 74 years who had a history of smoking greater than 30 pack years and were either currently smoking or quit smoking within the previous 15 years. The participants were then randomized to three consecutive annual screenings with low-dose CT or chest x-ray, and the primary outcome was lung cancer mortality. 
the majority of lung cancer cases detected in this trial were early stage, with 63% of cancers detected at stage one. And that was a really big deal. As you can expect, that was one of the main reasons that you had better survival with the group that was randomized to the low-dose CT scans. Uh, and that's because the cancers were detected at an earlier stage when compared to chest x-ray. One of the most impressive things, I think, in that data, as you're describing the 63% stage one is that in the group that got the screening, there was, I think it was about 70% stage one, two, it, when it was screen detected. And in those follow-up years after those three yearly scans, where they stopped doing the scans, we saw a higher percentage of patients then that had a stage three, four. There was a pretty significant stage shift that happened in the group randomized to screening. That's always the table. I think it's table five, the one that I always point out for the residents and fellows, because it really shows that even though we're detecting them earlier within that data, in that study, there were plenty of patients that had stage three, four disease, and that was after the years of the, of the screening. But as you pointed out, the population within the trial, age 55 to 74, and this led to the USPSTF recommendation for lung screening, which is what uh, then led to Medicare approval. I think the USPSTF recommendation was back in 2013. So we're now in the, the 10 year anniversary, essentially later this year of that USPSTF recommendation and the initiation of lung screening. Now, after the NLST, which as you pointed out, was more than 50,000 patients, this was more than a $250 million trial. This is not something that would be easily repeated. Um, we then had the Nelson trial, which was a smaller study, about 15,000 people in Europe. And, and what did that show? Yeah, so with regard to the Nelson trial, this was a study that enrolled about 15,800 patients, predominantly white males, between the ages of 50 and 74 years. And the study cohort was split into two groups and randomly assigned to undergo CT screening or no screening. So this is a different design from NLST because NLST compared low-dose CT with chest X-ray. Nelson compared CT screening with no screening. And in the group that was assigned to undergo CT screening, they got CT screens at baseline at year one, year three, and year 5.5. And the primary outcome was lung cancer mortality. When the authors specifically looked at men and women, they found that low-dose CT reduced lung cancer deaths by 24% in men at 10 years and up to 33% in women at 10 years compared to no screening. And this was also a landmark trial, a landmark randomized trial published in New England Journal in 2020. And this was a big deal because this is the second major randomized trial to show reduction in lung cancer mortality, um, the first one being in the U.S. with the National Lung Screening Trial. So you pointed out the four different time points over a 10-year time frame that the screening scan was done. And in that, we saw 68% of screen detected lung cancers were early stage, being stage one, two, and then only 21% when it was not a screen detected. And that was in the either in between years or in the later years. Now, one of the things that I really liked that was pointed out in the presentation, which I believe was at World Lung, uh, in the presentation, there was a mention that in that two and a half year time frame, when it went from year three to year 5.5, .5, that two and a half year time frame between scans, there was a higher number of stage four diagnoses uh, as opposed to when you had it yearly. Now, the standard of care in the US is to do a scan once a year. And I think that's a really important point, actually, as there's debate about how frequently scans need to be done, this really highlights the importance of that scan being yearly. And the current recommendations are yearly scans. And the Nelson trial, as you pointed out, enrolled a younger population. There was also less of a smoking history. And so this is what led to the USPSTF update now with a starting at age 50 with a 20-pack year history, still last cigarette within the last 15 years, 
and that's who currently qualifies for lung screening. So it nearly or about doubles the population in the U.S. that qualifies for lung screening. So you've highlighted now the two major trials. Of course, we also had the MILD trial, which was an Italian study of about a little more than 3,000 individuals. And this was a group that was initially screening once a year or once every other year versus no screening study. Uh, and that kind of ended up getting combined into screening versus no screening. And in those first five years, we didn't see a real significant benefit in lung cancer mortality in these smaller numbers. But from year five to year 10, it was a hazard ratio of, of just a little over 0.4. I think it was 0.42. Um, so a pretty dramatic separation of the curves from what we saw in that smaller study. And these studies really were meant to study if there's a benefit to lung screening. And of course, they've, they've demonstrated that and hence led to the standard of care. But they, they weren't really to demonstrate how much was the benefit. And I see a lot of analyses now that go back to these older studies and trying to parse out now, looking at the benefits of it. How much of the benefit is there? Is it important to define that? How significant do you think these results are? Um, and how much benefit to screening do you think there is? Those are great points, Jacob. So I think that going back to what you were saying, I want to also emphasize that in NLST, even though it wasn't the primary outcome, they did show all-cause mortality reduction. And that is really important to note. There were more patients and they were able to have that finding. Some of these other smaller trials just were simply not powered for that. And NLST, that wasn't their primary outcome, but they still found a reduction in all-cause mortality for further highlighting the importance of lung cancer screening. These are great points because in the current guidelines, everybody who is eligible should be getting screened on a yearly basis. And these randomized trials have only a limited period of screening. So for NLST, I was three scans and I think that the, the degree of benefit of lung cancer screening is probably underestimated by a lot. And so uh, that, that is something to take note of, is that these lung cancer screening trials are different from the current real-world recommendations and that uh, the, the true benefit and the, the impact of lung cancer screening is probably underestimated or not fully realized when you're just looking at the randomized trial data. So just to, to further shape out that discussion, the NLST, the Nelson trial were a study of is lung cancer screening beneficial and it definitively reports and shows better outcomes. It was not a, a, a matter of measuring degree of outcome, particularly when you're looking at a yearly screening over the full course of a, a program, which in the U.S., this qualifies patients age 50 to 80 with at least a 20-pack year smoking history and last cigarette within the last 15 years. The recommendation is that they get a scan once a year throughout the course of that time frame for as long as they qualify, I guess until they get to the point of 15 years since the last cigarette. I have issues with that as, as an endpoint. Somebody enters a screening program with a significant smoking history, and right as they get to that decade where they're most likely to get a lung cancer, they no longer qualify for lung screening. And certainly having quit for 15 years does not mean that that risk of lung cancer goes away. And so I do think that that will continue to be a point uh, of contention about screening going forward. Patients should be getting screening once a year throughout the course. And we know that actually after that first baseline year, the likelihood of it being a stage one or really early stage disease significantly increases. That first year of a scan now, getting into some more of this, we, we see from the American Lung Association, they put out a state of lung cancer report. And in that, they've mentioned the number of people getting lung screening, and it's pretty abysmal. So I think there's been a lot of confusion around the risks and benefits of lung screening. And, and some of the risks that I hear get mentioned, I think are, are important to clarify. Radiation exposure is something that concerns a lot of people, but the amount of radiation is so minimal that the American Physics Society essentially calls this uh, a degree of radiation that is negligible and really not something that could be measured in, in outcomes. Um, what are some of the risks that you hear to lung screening and some of your thoughts on those? I agree with you completely. Lung cancer screening is safe from a radiation exposure perspective. 
radiation exposure from a single low dose CT scan is less than background radiation exposure in a given year. So 10 years of scanning equals roughly one third of what a patient would receive from natural background radiation in the same period. And I think it's also important to point out that uh, the number needed to screen for lung cancer to vet one death, which is a common metric that can be used to compare cancer screening tests, the number need to screen for low dose CT is 320. And that number is actually lower for low dose CT than other forms of screening. So they, these are estimates using based off of the NLST and for the other cancers like breast, colon, prostate, cervical screening, that's um, some of their other large studies. So in, in terms of the, the risk benefit analysis, definitely everything points in strong favor towards lung cancer screening. In terms of other risks, so there's always the risk of having false positives from lung cancer screening. And we should note that the false positive rates with lung cancer screening are similar to other common screening procedures. And uh, since the NLST, there have been further developments of, for example, lung rads criteria to help lower the false positive rate. And there's always a concern that there's overdiagnosis from lung cancer screening. But again, those numbers compare very favorably to mammograms and mammography for breast cancer. And then finally, every time you find something on a CT scan that is concerning, you often want to further work it up with some kind of diagnostic evaluation or intervention. And the complications from that kind of workup have been shown in NLST and other studies to be very, 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 very low. So I would say overall, you should consider it very safe and that the risk benefit analysis definitely is strongly, strongly in favor of lung cancer screening. Yeah, these are such important points. The, the risk of an intervention for something that's not lung cancer is less than 1% within a lung screening program. This was shown by uh, Dr. Christina Williamson out of Leahy. That was one of the earlier intervention looks. The false positive rate is 13% at baseline and 5% in follow-up years. As you point, these numbers actually are very favorable compared to other screening studies. But I, I think there are a lot of misconceptions about these, and so it's important to to get that information out. And so what can you say about a, when you're seeing somebody with an indeterminate nodule and maybe your path on that, is that a fully clinical assessment? Um, are you following the NCCN guidelines? Is it a combination of both? Yes, you try to follow the guidelines, and uh, that's always a priority for me, but also individually, you have to take a look at what the exact situation is. At Mass General, I'm part of the pulmonary nodule clinic, where we discuss a lot of these nodules in a multidisciplinary setting, which has been fantastic. Uh, this was started by Dr. Joanne Shepard, our chief of thoracic radiology here at Mass General, who has been a true leader in lung cancer screening. And through her leadership, Mass General has screened the most number of people in New England, period. But one of the things we have done is have a radiologist, a pulmonologist, thoracic surgeon, medical oncology, and radiation oncology all come together to discuss nodules that are concerning. And I, I think in general, there are some broad pathways that I think about when it comes to indeterminate nodules. So if it's the first time we see any nodule on CT scan, it's reasonable to just get a repeat CT scan in about three months. Uh, and then if it's still there, then we I always talk to the patient about risks and benefits of close surveillance versus some kind of biopsy, either a CT guided biopsy or bronchoscopic evaluation, for example, with navigational bronchoscopy versus just taking it out. And oftentimes other pieces of data, for example, from a PET scan can help us figure out what might be the best path to lean towards. Um, but this is why it is tricky sometimes to figure out what the best next path is. And that's why it's good to um, be able to talk to other colleagues and come up with a consensus about 
next steps. Yeah, I think that's an important point. The guidelines are there uh, as that guidelines, but each person you see is needs to be clinically assessed uh, by a specialist. And the fact that you have that multidisciplinary discussion and that nodule clinic, uh, I mean, in my mind, that's really something that's a very important aspect to a lung screening program. Now, of course, you're doing more work than than seeing patients in clinic and, and operating on them. You've also founded the American Lung Cancer Screening Initiative. Can you give our listeners a, a quick overview of the initiative and what you and your team are doing? Thank you for uh, asking about that. So I'm really proud of the American Lung Cancer Screening Initiative. This is a all-volunteer nonprofit. So everybody is just contributing their time because they really care about lung cancer screening and trying to help save lives. And it right now is composed of over 300 doctors, medical students, undergraduate students from all across the U.S., Canada, and also in other parts of the world. And we're really working to increase the lung cancer screening rate and help more high-risk individuals get screened through community outreach education, and national, state, and local policy initiatives. So, for example, we've given over 200 presentations on lung cancer to a wide range of audiences, including community members, uh, healthcare providers, community leaders, and policymakers, and also our student community. And right now, we've probably taught over at least 15,000 individuals about lung cancer screening within the United States, but also in Canada, India, Mexico, Brazil, through community presentations. Well, one other area that we have been focusing on is engaging our leaders. Uh, so we've worked with over 340 mayors to issue proclamations, recognizing November as Lung Cancer Awareness Month and recognizing the importance of early detection of lung cancer. And uh, we've also worked to increase awareness of lung cancer screening by partnering with YouTube channels to include lung cancer screening information in their videos. And so through this outreach, we've reached over 8 million viewers on YouTube. And then another exciting thing that uh, I'm really excited about is one of our leaders, uh, Priyanka Sentil, and Drake Long, they've started a podcast series to provide a platform for lung cancer survivors, advocates, and experts to share their experiences with lung cancer. And so we've had the honor of talking with over 20 patients and doctors through this podcast. And uh, most recently, I'm very excited because we've started this campaign, which is to try to have uh, mayors and governors uh, talk about lung cancer screening and give public service announcements. So right now we've had over 40 mayors and governors give uh, public service announcements about lung cancer screening to their local communities. We had a very powerful public service announcement by the mayor from New Orleans talking about her, her personal experience with lung cancer, her father dying of lung cancer. Um, so, so we've really appreciated that. But we're still continuing to try to expand and, and push ourselves to figure out how to raise awareness. For example, working, at, and Jacob, you were there, where we teamed up with other folks in the Boston community to raise awareness uh, during National Lung Cancer Screening Day in November last year, uh, where we had lung cancer patients, lung cancer survivors, doctors, students, uh, members of the community, um, all paint white ribbons with the White Ribbon Project and Chris Draft to raise awareness for lung cancer. Today, we discussed lung cancer screening with Dr. Jeff Yang. We will offer a link below to a review article that uh, I did with a group of international investigators uh, and authors that gives a bit more of an overview on lung screening and building programs. Uh, of course, Dr. Yang and myself are both available to those out there that are working to build their programs and looking for ways uh, of making their programs more robust. Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't done so already, Take a moment to download the Medscape mobile app to listen and subscribe to this podcast series on lung cancer. This is Dr. Jacob Sands for In Discussion. Thanks for listening to Medscape's In Discussion lung cancer podcast series with our host, Dr. Jacob Sands. Be sure to look for more In Discussion episodes wherever you get your podcasts. Check out medscape.com 
or the Medscape app for show notes, links, and more information on lung cancer.